Welcome back at WNST, Towson, Baltimore. And Baltimore Positive, we're positively taking the Maryland Crab Cake Tour out on the road. We'll be at Coco's on Thursday. It is an all-star game week and sort of a rare all-star game week around here where the Orioles are relevant. We have all second half of incredible baseball together, but we're going to talk about a different kind of baseball here in this one. Uh, movie is out this week. It was um, it premiered earlier in the week. You might still be able to catch it out of the theater uh, when you catch this piece, but you can certainly watch it on digital. I wanted to involve Alan McCallum in this conversation. Alan's been a little off the field uh, a little bit this year, but uh, Alan McCallum and I have discussed on the air for, uh, well, I don't know, the better part of 25 years, the Negro Leagues and baseball and the Homestead Grays and uh, the amazing uh, little library they have out at the Owings Mills Town Center uh, when you get off the subway out there. Uh, there's a little mini Hall of Fame, but I've been to the real Hall of Fame out in Kansas City where this guy hails from. He is a, He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a musician and entertainer, but he has put together a film along with Sam Pollard. Uh, he is from Kansas City. We welcome Byron Motley onto the program whose father was a uh, was an umpire, uh, grandfather umpire in the in the uh, uh, in, in the Negro Leagues and wrote a book and now it's a film it's the league Byron I don't have a lot of time with you how are we going to get all of uh, you know all of this Negro baseball mu- museum and history and all of this stuff in the film into ten minutes man yeah I know and it, my father was the umpire was my father not grandpa. father sorry about that. you look too young to have a father I, I know <laughs> hey, I could be anybody's father as old as I am <laughs> well you wrote a book on this topic and you know I've been out to the hall of fame several times I was going to wear my Getty Lee shirt because Getty has all the autographed baseballs sure. and I'm a Rush yeah. fan yeah. but that museum in Kansas City I, I think I've been there three or four times through the course yeah. of going out to see the Royals, going out to see the Chiefs, the Jazz Museum's right next door, yep. the barbecue's good in Kansas City. I've always been inspired that every time I'm there and whomever I take with me, whether it's my wife, we've taken friends there, that there's so much more than just walking through that. Really, it's a museum as much as it's anything. And there, there's so much more than than most baseball fans know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's just uh, an incredible place. Um, it was started 25 years ago, I think. Uh, 1997 was the first year. Um, my father, along with Buck O'Neill and all the living players at the time who lived in Kansas City, they helped found that museum and they all helped pay money for it. Each of them would go around month after month and my father would pay one month, Buck would pay another month. Uh, to keep to to to, to create this Negro League Museum. And so and was a little storefront before, across the street from where the museum is now, a little storefront, like one room that was uh, that was the museum. And then they raised enough money to build the museum they have now, which is absolutely incredible. And uh, my father's statue is at home plate right there. Uh, so yeah, the history is just has been amazing. And to watch it grow. And I think they're building a new museum in a couple of years uh, at the uh, YMCA building where the Negro Leagues were actually founded uh, right down the street from uh, where the museum is now. So um, it's an incredible, incredible place. My friend Dion Warwick was just in New York, uh, the singer, uh, this weekend. And I saw a picture on the internet. I said, oh, she's, I said, I sent her a text. I said, Dion, I said, you're, you're in Kansas City? I said, if I had known, I would have flown there. And she's, I didn't, I didn't know because it's right there. So she promises next time I'm in New York, in, in Kansas City, you're flying in, and we're, she'd go in. nuts in the jazz section <laughs> too. I mean, oh, yeah. like it's, I tell people when they go to Kansas City, you can't not go to those museums. I mean, you gotta, they're adjacent. You, you pay one price, and it's an all day, go. or if you choose to oh, be. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. sat there with headsets on, listening to Satchmo and listening to music, and then, yeah. but, but the the museum for the baseball side of the museum. I also visited the gift shop because Alan right, loves yeah. Negro baseball history. I bought him uh-huh. coasters, so okay. I'm just letting you know with all the logos. So whenever I've been over his place, he's got coasters over his place. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for yeah. for you, the film and trying to tell this story, and I think most of us who love baseball, my last name's Aparicio on, on purpose. Okay. I came into the yeah. world through a baseball angle here in Baltimore back in the 60s uh, yeah. and a cousin that uh, came right from Venezuela there. with a dream. And here I am 55 years later. So baseball greatly impacted my life sure. and, you know, every aspect of my life. And, and I, I think about 
the stories that were untold by Ken Burns, the mm. stories that have been untold through um, what we've had here in Baltimore, where we almost lost our franchise. Now we have to get a lease again. There's so much money in baseball. And this part of the history, it kind of stopped, right? Like Negro baseball yeah. stopped and the, the white man sort of took over and said, we'll take yeah. all of you and, and bankrupted oh, yeah. black baseball. Oh, yeah. And oh, this yeah. film tells a little bit more about that but also in honoring the legends that we may know, Satchel Paige, Jackie Robinson, and some others that we don't know, you tried to tell a story in a film that I don't know this story has been told, and not in a romantic way like League of Their Own with the girls, but more like just a documentary. And Sam Pollard, let's start with him. And, and, and you were pitching this thing out. I mean, you got heavy, heavy hitters involved in this quest love, heavy hitters involved in this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well... They, they they got it. You know, a lot of people didn't quite get it. They, oh, this is cute. And they released, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what I met with Sam, he's like, yeah, if we can find the people who can you know, pay some money <laughs> to, to get it done, uh, which we did. Um, so that led to it. But yeah, it was just really, um, I guess just, I kept fighting the fight for 24 years because I knew that this was a great, this story had to be told. Speaking of Ken Burns, that's I remember that seeing that documentary when it came out. I, I was watching it, but this is really great. But the one hour section he did on the Negro release says that those are not the stories I grew up hearing as a child. That's not it. I said, there's a lot more to the story. And so he didn't years, talk to the right people at that time, is what you're saying. Well, no, right? no, no. He, he talked to Buck O'Neill. You can't talk any better to anybody better than Buck O'Neill. Buck O'Neill was the, the godfather of the Negro Leagues at that time. Um, but he didn't go into all the details. All the details. It was, you know, kind of whitewashed the Negro Leagues. So I thought these are not the stories I heard growing up. So um, a friend of mine told me, he says, "Well, you know, I'd love to work on that project with you, but I'm not the person to do this. You are." And so that's what got the ball rolling for me to start interviewing all the players I did, and widows, and uh, children of players, and former owners of teams, and um, whoever I could, could get to. And uh, it was a watershed point for me uh, to encounter these incredible, incredible people that I got to be friends with. Uh, some were like family. Uh, you know, one was my family, my father. But, you know, getting to know Buck O'Neill much better than I did as a kid. I mean, when he first saw me at the Negro League Baseball Museum, I had not seen Buck in, oh my God, in years. And the first thing he says, to me, he's, he screams, oh my God, little Motley. And I thought, he recognizes who I am. You know, it's just, you know, meeting people like that and really getting to know them so well. And um, yeah, it was just, it was a great journey. Uh, I, I miss them all dearly. They've all gone on to glory now, most of the people I've interviewed and, and knew. So I had Leon Day in my studio back in the day. Oh, and the, and wow. the, 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 the Orioles were in the business of honoring players like that in the early 90s when they opened Camden Yards and they were around. Descendants, um, I'm yeah. still very much in touch with one of his nieces, who's a beautiful chef here in town and makes okay. me crab cakes from time to time. Byron wow. Motley is our guest. The, the film is The League. It is available. Google it. You can find it out. Uh, Byron, you're – by trade, this isn't what you do, right? I mean, you've been involved in films and stuff, but you're really a singer, performer. You're more on the music side of things. Yeah. And you've also done some books. Uh, your Cuba book was beautiful. And I've spent some time Thank down you. in Havana around baseball as well when the Orioles traveled down there. And now it's been 25 years My that they did that. Th yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you've you really you, – you're a passion project man, are you not? Absolutely. If you don't have passion, then go home and go to bed because otherwise you got, you got to be passionate about what you're passionate about. And I and I am that person. I am that person. I, I love what I do. And I I don't get involved in something just to do it for fun. It's, it's passion. With the, so so music, for the league and, get, and getting this done, because uh -huh. we have to wrap up, I got a short window with you. Yeah extremely happy with it is you know from a getting every single thing in for 24 years trying to fit all of that in just but, from a cutting room floor standpoint to try to get every story in and i'm sure some of it didn't make the cutting room floor yeah, but maybe in the air of the internet you can have outtakes and more information for people yeah, right everything's not in this, this story there's a lot more and there's we didn't get into how the, the women were really involved that played for three women played in the negro leagues it's, 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 it's talked about just kind of touched but there's, you know, I, I did interviews with one of them who was still living at the time. 
She played uh, with the men. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was, her name is Mamie Peanut Johnson. Incredible lady. Um, yeah, so that, how the musicians were more involved with the leagues and how some of them own teams. Um, and they, they traveled on the same road, the buses with these players. So yeah, they're three um, well-known uh, musicians own Negro League baseball teams. So there's there's a lot more stories here, a lot more stories. Well, you can find them all in the league. And uh, again, I'm just going to give a free shout out to everybody in Kansas City. Go to Jack Stack, get some barbecue as well. Uh, you know, you don't want to no, make Gates sure you do are, that. Gates or Bryant's, is, uh, those are my favorite. Gates See, I mean, now, yeah. it's a good argument. Listen, I got a crab <laughs> cake tour here. I'm in Maryland. And if uh, you come in, I'll take you to Fadley's. I'll take you to Costas. I'll take you to Pat. And they're all different. And you can yeah. and you can pick which one you like. You just need to eat yeah. them all. So I yeah. agree with you, man. Yeah, well, absolutely. Congratulations on getting the film done. And uh, we hope to have Sam Pollard on at some point later on, maybe this summer, to talk about it as well. Hey, you picked a great time in Baltimore to get interest. Interest is up in here in Cincinnati and other places. You guys beat us up out in Kansas City a number of years ago. And I saw <laughs> – I, I had uh, Jeff Montgomery on recently. Brian McCray's oh. a great buddy of mine as well. I mean, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But you guys, yeah. you know, you're digging out of some things there. But you had your parade. I saw the parade. There's a big parade in the history of parades, right? That's right. Kansas City does not play when it comes to the sports. Does not play. Yeah. You got to deal with your football team at some point before it's all over with. Uh, Byron Motley is our guest. He is a singer, songwriter, musician, entertainer, filmmaker. The film is The League, about the history of Negro baseball leagues and lots of stories that maybe you haven't heard that you can hear. It's a great documentary. Also involves Quest Love. Make sure you're checking that out. You can download it digitally as well. Byron, really appreciate the time. Come back. We'll talk some music in Cuba next time, brother. Sounds good to me. You got That's it. All right, man. Yeah. Maryland Crab Cake Tour is back out on the road this week. We're going to be at Coco's on Thursday. Um, speaking of sports, Dave Shinen's going to join us on the Washington Post. A lot of baseball, some Olympics. Rasig's going to be by, as well as State Senator Corey McRae. I always love having Corey on and Marcella's Crab Cake. We'll see you over at Coco's. I will have some Maryland Lottery scratch-offs to give away in conjunction with our friends at Window Nation. We present the Maryland Crab Cake Tour. 25 years ago and strong on August 3rd. We'll be over at Costas and Drug City as well celebrating. We are WNST AM 1570. Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking Baltimore positive. Play ball.